body balance. So this is an informative session about environmental pollutants. Today, we're going to learn about what pollution is, where it can be found, and how to avoid it. This lesson's meant to be fun and informative, and I hope you leave here with a better understanding of why avoiding pollution is important for your health and well-being. So here are a few of the objectives that we're going to have today. So this is what you're going to be learning in this lesson. You're going to learn why certain foods contain pollutants and how to limit your exposure to pollution. You're going to learn ways to consume healthy fish, learn what arsenic is and where it's found, and learn ways to choose to cook healthy meat and dairy. Environmental pollutants in food can be concerning. Foods like fish can be contaminated with mercury and PCBs, and we're going to talk about what those things are here later, by the way. Fruits and rice might contain arsenic. High-fat meat and dairy products also have chemicals from pollution that aren't healthy for your body. Throughout this presentation, we're going to learn how to choose foods with fewer pollutants, which can help to keep your body healthier and lessen your risk of chronic health disease. So let's go ahead and start off pretty simple here. So what is pollution? So hazardous chemicals such as heavy metals and persistent organic compounds pollute our natural environment that are found in the air, water, soil, and sediments, as well as our foods. So certain foods collect pollutants more easily than others, and exposure to these substances can contribute to increased health risk if they occur for long enough at high enough levels. Research has shown that hazardous chemicals might cause the body to be more vulnerable to medical conditions such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even cancer. So this plain glass of water here, it represents the quality of the air that we're all breathing. Now, I want you to think about the things that you've done in the last 24 hours, okay? So this blue food coloring here, this is gonna be anything that requires gasoline. So if you took a car to work, if you took a bus to school, or let's say maybe you, I don't know, rode a train, plane, anything in the last year. So already our water's looking a little bit different. Next up, I've got some red food coloring. So this food coloring, I want you to think about electricity. So let's say that you woke up this morning and you blow dried your hair. Or maybe you just even had your TV running, right? And that depended on the electricity plant which is running off fossil fuels. I want you to think about any chemicals or anything that burns, right? So this is gonna be like your wood stoves. Let's say you went camping and had a campfire, right? Or maybe you burned some leaves or some boxes. Or did you use some hairspray, some fingernail polish, some deodorant? Just think of all the chemicals that we use every day. Look at our water now. Remember, this is supposed to be the air we breathe. Would you be comfortable breathing this in? Chances are your answer is no. Okay, so now I want you to think of things that can help clean the air. So maybe you use a source of renewable energy instead of electricity, right? Or maybe instead of driving to work, you took a bike or walked. Maybe instead of burning those boxes, you recycled them. And let's say that you just keep doing these things, right? So instead of throwing things away, you having food waste, you compost. And slowly but surely, these small actions over time will cause a change. So let's see what happens to our air now. So as you can see here, we can reduce the pollution that we've currently done. However, it's gonna take the efforts of everybody and through these small actions to help do this and to help clean things back up. So to start off talking about food, let's talk about one of the healthiest types of meat that you can choose, fish. So why should you eat fish? Fish are a healthy choice because they're an excellent source of high quality protein that also contains many essential nutrients, including all the B vitamins, vitamin D and E. Fish can be an alternative to meat and poultry and is a lower saturated fat than other animal proteins. Consumption of fish can aid in growth and development, and it's considered heart healthy because of the omega-3 fatty acids that it contains. Research shows that regular intake of omega-3 fats is associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. So despite fish containing environmental pollutants, it is a healthy choice. You just need to know which fish are best to limit your consumption and to decrease your exposure of environmental pollutants. So I'm going to give you a second to think. What types of fish do you think would have more pollution? Okay, so go ahead and hold on to those fish there, and we're going to talk about why fish have pollution in them. So as previously mentioned, certain fish contain environmental pollutants that can cause adverse health effects. So methylmercury is something that's toxic to humans and is particularly harmful to your brain and nervous system. 
the FDA works with the EPA to develop guidelines for consumers to help follow when eating different kinds of fish. Making sure that you follow these guidelines can help make sure that you aren't consuming too much mercury. So the ways that they get polluted, right? There's coal, oil, and natural gas. All these things are going into the air. Once they're in the air, they fall back to the ground and it builds up in the streams and the oceans, which naturally also affects the bacteria and the fish, right? So then you eat the fish and therefore you also have the pollution in your body. Okay, so what types of fish did you think of earlier? Let's see if any of them are here on this slide. So the EPA recommends that you eat two meals of fish per week and that you choose fish that are low in mercury. So all the fish here that are low in mercury include tuna, catfish, pollock, salmon, and shrimp. And fish that are high in mercury include shark, swordfish, king mackerel, pilefish, and albacore tuna. So notice that there are two different types of tuna on here. One is low in mercury, the canned light tuna, and then the albacore tuna is high in mercury. So when you're making decisions at the store, maybe try to reach for that light tuna more often. It's not recommended to eat fish that contain mercury very often. In Kentucky, there are fish consumption restrictions for certain waters and segments of the population. So populations of concern are going to include our pregnant people, anyone breastfeeding, anyone who might become pregnant, young children, older adults, and other people who consume high amounts of fish. Pregnant or breastfeeding women should also avoid eating fish that tend to be high in mercury. But they're encouraged to eat a variety of fish that are lower in mercury because these fish contain awesome nutrients for both mom and baby. So do you remember earlier when I said PCBs? Let's talk about what that means. So PCBs are a class of chlorinated organic compounds and they're used in many different industrial things. So PCBs, they were banned in 1979, but unfortunately because of their use, they can still be found out in the environment and we're exposed to them through eating fish, meats, and dairy. So researchers at the University of Kentucky, they are actually funded to study chlorinated organic compounds, such as PCBs, that are prevalent in most super fun hazardous waste sites, including those found in Kentucky. The research includes how lifestyle behaviors, such as nutrition and physical activity, may help protect you from these chlorinated organic compounds, as well as ways to detect and clean up these pollutants. So this program is called the Superfund Research, and it's funded by the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences. PCBs are still in our food and environment because of these Superfund sites. They easily enter the food chain and after consumption accumulate in the fatty tissue of people and animals. Now here's the scary thing, you all. You may be thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't really need to be worried about these Superfund sites. They're pretty far away. Well, let's take a look at that. So here, all I've done is I've gone to the EPA's website, and here we have search for Superfund sites where you live. Now, remember, these are the sites with pollution in the ground that are contaminating our water, our environment, and our food that we eat. And you remember, you might have been thinking, oh, well, this isn't something I need to worry about. Well, let's just see here. So I've put in Kentucky, which, you know, hopefully was pretty much where all of us live. Um, if you're watching this for some reason outside of the state of Kentucky, you can go to this website and change your state to here. But let's just see here. We've got one in Bullitt County, Marshall, McLean, Ohio, Graves. Let's go to page two, Hardin. There's actually one in Fleming County, as you can see here. The Maxi Flats Nuclear Disposal Site. So some of you may have heard this, especially those of you that live in Fleming County. I'll let that load here. But you can also see a map. So right here, you know, we've got our Licking River area, and that is pretty much right smack dab on the outskirts of our area, which means that this site, if not taken care of properly through this program, can be contaminating the food and environment around us. So yeah, here's more information on it, the Maxi Flats Nuclear Disposal Site. So it's a super fun site located in Fleming County, Kentucky. The site accepted radioactive waste from 1963 to 1977. Now that we know that this is something that isn't just in these far off places, it's something that we have right here at home, let's go ahead and dive back into our presentation. So the PCBs in these sites and other environmental pollutions, how do they get into the fish? So here in step one, right here, you can actually see that the PCBs, they're chemicals that are harmful to the children. They're released through these industries. Through um, So all these, all these chemical plants, other indus industrial things, they're putting these into the air, right? What happens then is that the PCBs fall from the air into the environment and the water. It's consumed by the fish, the organisms, and then we eat it, and it gets into us. So PCBs, these are pollutants found in fish. So testing for PCBs, it varies by state and region. Most states have safe eating guidelines for specific groups of water, especially for those that remember pregnant women, women planning to become pregnant, and children under 15. They build up in fat, and they can be reduced by removing fat whenever you cook or clean fish. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and move on from the fish and let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite foods actually, rice. So arsenic is toxic and it is found in some foods. It's a natural substance that's commonly found in water, soil, and air, and it often forms naturally when rocks break down. There are higher levels of arsenic around mines. So let me just let you think for yourself here for a minute. Found around mines, do you think that's something that we should probably be concerned about, especially here in eastern Kentucky? Hopefully said yes. So some pesticides, so the things that we're spraying on our foods and other plants, they also contain arsenic. Why is arsenic bad? Well, studies, they show that being exposed to too much arsenic increases your risk of skin, bladder, and lung cancers. And it might also increase your risk for heart disease. So how are we exposed to arsenic? So fruit and fruit juices. The FDA has tested fruit juices for arsenic since 91, and juices high in arsenic don't make it to the grocery store shelves. Next is rice. And this one makes me sad because I love rice. If the soil it is grown in has high levels of arsenic, you know, and then you eat that rice, guess what? You're consuming arsenic. Another surprising exposure of arsenic, smoking. Yeah, smoking actually exposes you to arsenic. So how to avoid arsenic? Well, one, rinse your rice. Put one cup of rice in six cups of water, stir and drain well. That, can, that alone removes about 30% of the arsenic in your rice. So also look for white rices grown in California, Pakistan, and India. These tend to have very low levels of arsenic in them. So white rice that's grown in places like Arkansas, Louisiana, or Texas, those usually have high levels. So maybe start paying attention to where your rice is grown at on your labels. Brown rice, and I know this is surprising because, you know, with nutrition, we typically push brown rice over white rice for health reasons. <laughs> but eating it too much, you know, it's actually going to have higher levels of arsenic. So brown rice from California, Pakistan, and India, they have less arsenic than brown rice from the rest of the U.S. And other grains like quinoa, buckwheat, and millet, those are also low in arsenic and similar to rice. So that's it for arsenic. Now let's look at meat and dairy. So pollutants like PCBs and other pesticides tend to collect in the fat of meat and dairy products, pretty similar to the fish, right? So because of this, it's best to choose low-fat meats and dairy products, like low-fat cheese and fat-free or 1% milk. Trimming the visible fat from meat also helps keep pesticides that have collected there outside of your diet. Some pesticides can contribute to chronic diseases and cancer. This is more likely if, cons if you consume high amounts of pesticide residue in your food. Reducing animal fats in your diet can also help to reduce your exposure to chemical pollutants in your food, and it can help reduce your risk for chronic disease. This one's another bummer, pretty similar to the rice for me, because let me tell you, I love to grill some food. Unfortunately, meats cooked with direct heat naturally from sub substances that might increase your cancer risk, aka charcoal or propane, <laughs> it can make it harder for your body to fight off cancer and make it easier for cancer to spread in your body. This usually applies to meats that are cooked at or above 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty much anything that you're grilling. And this is especially true if your high-fat meats like your steaks or, you know, other good examples, maybe your brisket, if you char them. I know, big bummer, right? So cooking meat at high temperatures, such as pan frying or grilling, is not the best for your health. So how exactly can you limit your exposure to harmful substances during cooking? Well, don't eat charred pieces of meat. I know, I know, but maybe try to pass on it every once in a while. Do not use fat drippings from meat cooked at high temperatures. I'm looking at you, bacon grease. And cook meats for a longer period of time at a lower temperature. So remember, slow and low is better and has less contamination. Use a microwave to cook meat or to partially cook meat before grilling so there's less time for harmful substances to form. And if you do grill, flip your meat frequently, right? You don't want it to char. And maybe try to limit your grilling to only occasionally. One good example of a way to kind of do this is to maybe use a slow cooker more. So just think about it. It's going to cook meat low at a low temperature and over a longer period of time. This is a good choice to limit your exposure to harmful substances. All right, so just to wrap up here, in summary, many of the foods available to us can be polluted in many different ways. Examples are mercury and PCB pollution fish, and arsenic contamination in fruit juice and rice. Following the suggestions outlined here in this presentation will not only help you to reduce your consumption and your exposure to harmful substances, but it'll also help you to live a healthier lifestyle. Even simple things like just trimming the fat from your meat and choosing low-fat dairy are great ways to reduce your exposure and improve your health. Strive to lead a healthy lifestyle to protect your body from the negative effects of pollution and to reduce your risk for chronic diseases.